requirements for healthcare services, origination of coordinated care and integrated services delivery. We also have Professor Malcolm Pradhan, the Chief Medical Officer at Alcidian. He is also the co-founder. Malcolm holds formal qualifications in medicine, complemented with a PhD in medical informatics from Stanford University. And he is a founding fellow of the Australasian College of Health Informatics. Prior to Alcidian, Malcolm was the Associate Dean of IT and Director of Medical Informatics at the University of Adelaide. Malcolm provided thought leadership and conducted research into applications of CDSS and into optimum uses of a variety of statistical and probabilistic methods for applying CDSS. I would like now, I would like, now like to hand across to Mr Gavin Waits, a non-executive director of Narracuda Resources, to outline the details of the transaction. Thanks very much, Ashley. Um, so very briefly, Narracuda is a listed company. Uh, it has about 3.75 million cash in the bank. Um, as a company, we've flagged publicly to the market that uh, we've been looking at various acquisition opportunities for some time, um, including some that were, were non-resources. Um, we're very pleased to have uh, secured the Alcidian transaction after some months of discussion with the company and we believe it's a fantastic business and, and it has significant potential to grow from its current position. Um, to run you through quickly on the acquisition terms, uh, so Narracuda will acquire Alcidian for the value of $12.4 million in script. Um, there is also a performance element to the deal whereby Alcidian will receive a further four and a half million worth of shares on achieving $10 million in, in revenue for 12 consecutive months within two years and a further 4.6 million worth of shares on achieving $15 million in revenue 12 months consecutive again uh, within three years of completion of the transaction. Um, importantly, um, you know, with the cash that Narracuda has and also with the, uh, the balance sheet that uh, Alcidian currently has and a small capital raising, um, now, on completion of the transaction, the company will emerge with circa $7 million in cash and no debt, um, which will provide them with a significant platform from which to grow you know, their existing business. Um, just flipping over the slide, and with some of this stuff is covered on this slide, but um, I guess I just wanted to run you through some of the rationale for the, for the acquisition, which is, is really you know, quite simple from our perspective. Um, having you know spent some months now looking at the business and, and going through all the you know the, all the particulars, um, you know first and foremost uh, you know the healthcare technology sector is a massive and growing market. It's predicted to be worth some 56.7 billion US by the you know the end of 2017. You know it's a market that's growing and it's not going anywhere and it's going to become you know more and more important as you know efficiencies are searched for um, you know generally um, you know within hospitals. Secondly, you know, Acidian is, is established. You know, it's operational today. It's already in 11 hospitals within Australia. You know, that tells me it's got cutting edge technology. It tells me that it works and it tells me that there is a need for the product out there in, in hospitals globally. Um, yeah, thirdly, you know, we're really impressed by, you know, clearly there's been a lot of money spent on the company to date developing the technology. Uh, but since you know, they've started to commercialise the business, they've grown very rapidly. Um, particularly, as you can see, they you know they hit circa 5.1 million of revenue for financial year 2015, which was a 36% jump in revenue from the previous financial year. Um, so you know it shows clearly that um, you know they're making very good progress in terms of commercialising you know, their technology. Um, and, and running on from the you know the revenue side of things, um, you know given that uh, it's a you know it's a it's a licensing style model and you know longer term contract style model. You know, there's a high degree, you know, of recurring revenue um, within the business, which is, you know, quite an important factor. Um, lastly, and probably most importantly on the rationale side, you know, is people. You know, we think people is probably the most important thing in terms of, of backing a company and, and backing management. Um, you know, the guys are highly credentialed individuals um, with, a, you know, with a proven track record in their sector. Um, you know, but particular of importance is you know the, the management's uh, um, track record in growing businesses internationally and particularly in the US. And you know we see that there's a huge global opportunity for this company to take its technology and, and grow it within Australia and overseas. And you know we see there's a key thematic um, developing, particularly in the US, with the Obamacare legislation. 
essentially, you know, where hospitals will need to improve efficiency through digitising their systems, and you know, Alcidian is you know very well placed um, to take advantage of that. Um, so that's kind of really it for me uh, in terms of the Narracuda front and you know the acquiring entity. Um, I'd now like to pass on to to the CEO of the company and co-founder Ray Blight, uh, who will take you through um, some further comments. Thank you very much, Gavin, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I must say I'm delighted to have this uh, opportunity to talk to you about Alcidian, uh, its uh, technology in the decision support uh, space, um, and the opportunities that we wish to capture to rapidly grow our business now. Uh, as Gavin said, not just in the Australian New Zealand market, but with an eye to the US uh, and beyond. Um, on this summary sheet, uh, you can see revenues uh, last year a little over uh, $5 million. Uh, a heavy focus um, last year and in the years leading up uh, to FY15 on uh, innovation, on further product development, um, and uh, in financial year 15, uh, we were able to bring uh, two new products uh, to the market. Uh, we made a small loss uh, in that context, uh, a bit over $180,000. Um, we are a relatively uh, small uh, business in terms of staff complement, um, around uh, 40 full-time equivalent. Um, and up until recent times, our staff complement has been really focused on uh, technologists, on engineers, um, on developers, as we put a huge effort into our innovations and building uh, class-leading uh, products. Um, going forward, though, that focus will shift to um, sales and marketing as we uh, pursue, pursue revenue-driven uh, growth in, uh, in revenue. Um, the focus on uh, innovation, and uh, R&D is shown in that R&D investment line where we have expended approximately $15 million. Uh, that figure along with the revenue figure and the EBITDA figure uh, is from unaudited accounts um, at this stage. Our market focus is the uh, hospital uh, space primarily, uh, although uh, we do have products that are now spanning the hospital to community uh, interface where we think uh, in the future there will be uh, quite considerable additional activity as systems move to uh, treat chronic conditions, etc., in the community rather than uh, in the hospital. We talk about our product set uh, in three dimensions, uh, emergency department, a patient flow which really spans uh, all of the inpatient services from the ED through clinical units uh, to discharge. And then the third space uh, is the outpatient space where we have our Maya uh, clinic uh, product. Um, but what that doesn't tell you is that behind all of those products is a generic uh, health informatics platform built with a specific focus of supporting clinical decision uh, uh, clinical decision making. Uh, we call that platform, you know, the Maya platform. So out in the hospital environment, uh, patients, you know, staff, etc., see the ED products, the flow product, the clinic product, but behind that is a very, very powerful asset, the Maya platform, uh, which is connected into a whole range of other systems um, in the hospital. Uh, you can see there at the bottom of that slide, uh, the prior funding uh, that we have received, and you can see there quite a heavy emphasis on uh, competitive R&D grants that we have uh, competed for and won, and that has contributed to our technology base. So the space that we are in is a medical technology, more specific health informatics, uh, more specifically a clinical decision uh, support with the target purpose of driving high performance healthcare services initially through hospitals but in the longer term across the community as well. And by high performance healthcare services we mean services that are safer, uh, that are delivered you know, more rapidly, 
are cost effective in terms of patient outcomes. So say for, for patients, we achieve that by focusing on the patient's clinical risk and prompting clinicians as to what they might do about that clinical risk. We provide or support the faster delivery of care. That means patients spend less time uh, in hospital to achieve a good clinical outcome. Uh, by continually identifying any service barriers to the progress of that patient so that those barriers can be focused down on and, and removed, keeping the, the patient moving uh, forward at, uh, at optimal speed. Uh, and uh, I guess our other uh, key contribution to high performance he healthcare comes in improved uh, productivity. A number of international studies show that for clinicians and nurses, on an average shift, only about 30% of their time goes into direct clinical care. So that's what they're trained to do. Uh, that's what only they can do, but they only get to contribute 30% of their time on shift to those activities. And the vast bulk of their time goes on non care activities, trying to figure out you know, where the patient is, uh, trying to understand what the latest clinical information on the patient might be, trying to uh, figure out why they are blocked in the radiology department um, and so on. As we look at Australian public hospital health care over the years, the increase in the productivity of the care teams has been very modest, you know, in, in Victoria it's been around 3% per annum and that's usually been wiped out by uh, higher increases um, in payroll. So in the context of our hospitals being overstretched, uh, in the context of increasing demand from um, ageing populations and other factors, we believe that the holy grail for high performance hospital care is getting the productivity of the care team and the clinicians right. Because that means with staff that are already trained, already in place, we can do more care. This is a graphic which illustrates uh, some key aspects about our technology. This is based on uh, a Victorian Government Business and Innovation Grant that we won to prove an intelligent patient journey system, to prove that such a thing you know, could be uh, built. Um, that resulted in the client hospitals, the Western Health Public Health Network in Melbourne. They run three hospitals, a total of approximately 30 wards servicing a patient uh, population of about 900,000 people. And before we had completed uh, the proof of concept grant, uh, they commissioned us to put the solution into production. So it came out of the laboratory in about June of last year, 2014. Uh, it is now fully implemented across three hospital sites, some 30 wards, and has been implemented in the Royal Darwin and Alice Springs hospitals. And we've just recently been given preferred vendor status uh, for an installation um, in New Zealand. But here you can see a care team member. Uh, they have uh, an iPad uh, device. It also runs on the iPad mini where they are given visual clues as to where the clinical risk lies with the patient that they are attending to. So as distinct from traditional health IT systems where they'd have to go to a computer terminal somewhere, you know, log on, uh, try and get the patient name correct and then be deluged with a whole heap of clinical data. With our system, we understand which patient they are treating, where, we look at the available data, we identify the clinical risk in that data and that's what is pushed visually to the clinician or care team member. They can then focus on the essence of their job which is, okay, these are the indications as to the patient's clinical risk. I'm now going to make these choices for their follow-on uh, therapy. Here's a quote from uh, Professor Waranti, 
uh, one of the senior staff specialists at Western Health where he's validating that that has skyrocketed the efficiency in patient care. In this graphic, this is also from our Western uh, Health uh, site. A senior nurse consultant is at the bedside with the patient again with that patient's clinical data at their fingertips. But in this case, um, they are now booking a follow-on service uh, for that patient, guided by that patient's clinical risk. And by being at the bedside, uh, they are able to actually share with the patient details of where that patient is in their journey, uh, what is going to be arranged for them next and why. So in addition to that being of great value to the care professional, it's also very well received by the patients. It really assists in them feeling that they are cared for, feeling that they are in the picture and it lifts their satisfaction uh, with, with the service um, and uh, I guess in subtle ways that also contributes to a faster recovery. Uh, this uh, graphic here is showing another aspect though of that, uh, uh, that Maya flow, that patient flow innovation in Western Health. And this is really around how the hospital executives and the hospital bed managers, how they uh, most efficiently manage the bed stock resources at their disposals. So we have the advantage in our system that because we know exactly what is happening with the patient at the point of care, we know any changes in their clinical risk, uh, we, we, we know the sorts of services that are being ordered uh, for that patient at the time they are ordered, we can massage that data up into a hospital-wide view which then allows the bed managers to say, okay, it's a patient Smith in Ward X uh, that really needs to be you know, scheduled for radiology or it's patient Jones in the emergency department that really needs to be put in that next available bed in the cardiology unit, you know, for example. So here you can see uh, a quote uh, from a, a non-clinical executive at uh, Western Health you know, validating uh, the, the utility and the value to resource management of uh, really this same solution, just a different view of the data, again on an iPad that the bed managers can take with them around the wards. In this uh, view, uh, you can see our large uh, digital display. So anything that's available on the iPad mini, data that's tapped into the iPad mini at the bedside is instantly available on these large displays which are of great value um, in the nursing workstations or in other rooms where groups uh, of care team members need to come together perhaps uh, during shift handover uh, or at other times uh, to confer about the needs of a particular patient, to confer about the status of a particular patient. Also though in this uh, graphic you can see a, an iPad that's wall mounted. That's proven to be a very high value in Western Health when other care professionals come visiting to the ward. A classic example would be a patient needs a physiotherapy consult, so when the physiotherapist arrives on the ward, they can go to the iPad mini and uh, instantly update themselves on the current clinical status of the patient, know exactly where the patient is, uh, can see what else is planned for the patient, go to the patient, provide their service and then come back here before leaving the ward and just uh, updating um, any uh, clinical uh, information. But you'll see this, this quote uh, talks about uh, we have created an e-health guidance system. So in addition to that brief overview of functions that I've given you, another very powerful uh, capability of the My Platform, which is sitting in the background, that, that's, in the, that's in the server rooms, uh, usually in the IT department in the bowels of the hospital. Um, 
on the My platform, we are able to take hospital approved clinical protocols that have been written to guide care professionals on how they might respond to a particular type of clinical risk. Um, and we can automate those hospital approved clinical guidelines uh, to give the care team guidance in specific, specific clinical risk instances um, on what the best practice evidence would suggest their clinical choices might be. Uh, just returning to um, an overview of the market uh, activity, just to re reiterate some of Gavin's comments. Um, globally, healthcare expenditure is uh, predicted to increase to uh, f over $56 billion by 2017. So it is a massive market and healthcare is a major public and private issue in all Western uh, economies. Um, but within that overall expenditure growth, the growth in uh, mobile healthcare technology um, is even more uh, startling. Uh, from a base of about 7 billion now uh, to around 23 billion by 2017. And I hope those a few examples uh, that I explained about the, the, the power and value and importance of our mobile devices you know, underscores um, you know, the reality of that uh, prediction. Um, but moving down to, again, a further subset, the subset of clinical decision support technology, uh, that's coming off a much smaller uh, base uh, around a billion dollars in 2013, um, but that is predicted to quadruple um, over the next two to three years. And I think that's driven by the fact that as we move to electronic health records, as there's been more investment in health IT systems, more investment in monitoring devices, the amount of clinical data that is available for a patient, both within their current episode but from previous hospitalization is just becoming absolutely enormous and in fact um, you know, it's becoming increasingly difficult uh, for care professionals to actually stay across that clinical information. So the reason that clinical decision support is now so important for the future is that it can filter out the extraneous elements of that huge individual patient data set guided by what is known of that patient's clinical risk to really just harvest the data that is pertinent to the management of that clinical risk. And that's the sort of thing that we do through our Maya uh, platform and that's why we're able to push to the clinician very high value um, information. Uh, further on uh, down that slide, um, part of the reason why we talk of the US market amongst uh, other uh, overseas opportunities uh, is because um, it's the fastest growing uh, region for clinical uh, decision support. That doesn't mean that other nations are not catching on to this, uh, but the US uh, is ahead of the game at this point in time and uh, we wish to capture that uh, opportunity. Uh, and, uh, and to get here, to be, to be able to uh, explain these products now as a reality has really only been possible because we have invested in that back-end My platform. That's where our decision support assets uh, really uh, lie. Uh, it makes our product in the hands of the care team look deceptively simple. That's a fabulous thing. Um, uh, our products are intuitive uh, for the care team to use. It's visual, they love using it, uh, but there is indeed uh, a lot of uh, hard sweat and tears uh, in that Maya platform that sits behind it. So the, the Maya platform uh, that hosts our decision support capability is able to integrate with all other data sources uh, in, the, in a hospital. So typically we pull data from the admission system, the pathology system, the radiology system, uh, etc. That data is brought into the platform 
and that's where we can apply smart algorithms, uh, best practice knowledge bases to move from just pertinent information to actually adding some clinical intelligence to that information uh, to, to push to the uh, care team. The, the US uh, you know, market has uh, for some time now uh, really pushed widespread implementation of the electronic health record. Um, as, a, as a care uh, healthcare administrator with a strong IT background, I regret to say that many of those electronic health record uh, installations are creating more problems for the care team than they are solving. I mentioned earlier they've got the tendency to deluge the care team with data, but also uh, we're noticing that with a number of electronic health record implementations, a huge time burden is being put on the care team to then you know, manually update the electronic health record and that is actually taking time away uh, from patient care and it's another reason why in the US where they've had electronic health records for a number of years, they are truly onto the importance of clinical decision support technology. Uh, very importantly though, as we get down towards the bottom of that slide, uh, you'll see that the US government has now you know, legislated uh, that hospitals have to focus on components of clinical decision support and uh, the Meaningful Use uh, uh, Act uh, is basically saying that if they can't demonstrate that type of capability then they're going to face funding penalties from the government. I might just uh, dig down into a little more detail around our key product sets. Um, we focused on the emergency department very early in our history um, because universally in Western healthcare every hospital has a problem with the ED. Excessive patient waiting times, even when patients get seen, uh, it's then a long time before treatment you know, commences. Uh, there are problems getting patients out of the ED uh, into hospital beds uh, when they need that. So um, we tackled this uh, space um, approximately five or six years ago. I think we were the first vendor uh, to have a touchscreen driven human interface uh, to use to use um, icons, icon driven uh, software. Uh, we used RFID uh, to now enable clinicians to log on just with a swipe rather, rather than having to use keyboards um, and, and, and mice. From that experience though over the years and here I'm drawing on the experience from our ED installations in the Northern Territory or in the Royal Darwin, Alice Springs, Catherine, Tennant Creek Gove EDs. We, uh, we now have evidence that by using our technology, patient treatment can commence an hour earlier. And that is very significant in healthcare. You know, global literature says the earlier an intervention starts, the better the prospects of a good healthcare outcome. It also means though that that's one hour less where the patient is, you know, deteriorating. Um, it's one hour less where they're getting, you know, agitated, you know, waiting for care, and so on. We've also though shown that just through deploying our technology, actual cash uh, savings are made in terms of a reduction in the tests um, that are ordered. Uh, we've recently received a further purchase order from Northern Territory to uh, implement a best practice uh, test ordering protocol um, that will guide junior doctors as to what are the most clinically appropriate tests to order for a particular clinical condition and uh, we're very optimistic that that will increase that percentage savings uh, very significantly once that technology is on stream. Um, but another aspect 
another very important aspect of our technology is that it addresses this quite startling um, statistic that typically in emergency departments something like 40% of the tests that are that are ordered are never witnessed you know they they never looked at and i guess if you think about you know the the work pressures the chaos from time to time staff changing uh, shifts perhaps it's not surprising that 40% are not looked at but that of course is a huge degree um, of wastage but more importantly, it is also a source of patient clinical risk. Uh, the evidence suggests that of those uh, tests that are not witnessed, around 18% of them you know, will be critical. In other words, it actually was very important that the care team were made aware of those abnormal uh, results. So with our technology, because we push every test result to the care team, we colour code the abnormal results so they can't be overlooked. We have seriously redressed uh, that source of uh, wastage and that source of patient clinical risk. Um, and furthermore, it's been uh, practice, common practice in emergency departments without, te without our technology that the head of the ED or senior consultants have had to sit down with paper printed test results for patients flicking through trying to make sure they haven't missed anything so it's been quite common for senior consultants to have to spend several hours a day doing that that manual checking so we make that very poor use of senior class senior consultant time we make that redundant with this technology um, I, I mentioned before the effort that we've put into making sure that the human interface is the best at can be that's important for engaging clinicians and without their engagement they won't use the technology they'll resort back to paper and pen uh, so again we've had validation from the Northern Territory through uh, clinical staff satisfaction surveys that our technology is very very highly uh, regarded from a utility uh, ease of use and clinician satisfaction uh, point of view The Maya Patient Flow product set, this is the name that we have given uh, to that original intelligent patient journey system project uh, that we approved and put into production at uh, Western Health. Um, it is an e-guidance uh, system. Uh, for example, uh, it's uh, usual practice in most hospitals for the nursing staff, for example, to do a nursing assessment of every patient that comes into the ward, um, looking for risk uh, factors. Usually large sheets of uh, paper uh, are used for that process, whereas with our technology, uh, we can put that in an electric form, electronic form on our system, and then with the decision engine in the background, as the nurse makes the clinical assessment of the patient, the decision engine can start building up follow-on care options for their consideration. The full implementation of MyFlow in Western Health across all three hospital campuses, 30 odd wards, uh, commenced in July of last year, uh, was uh, completed approximately four or five months ago. But the early uh, indications are that um, well, well, very high validation again from clinical staff in terms of their keenness to, to use it. But from a service point of view, they've now got excellent transparency around the discharge plan. The system tells them uh, after the clinical decisions have been made when this patient should be expected to be discharged. So they can keep an eye on that parameter and if it looks like that parameter uh, is not going to be met, they can drill down to see where the barriers are, remove those barriers and ensure the patient uh, moves uh, on in a clinically sound uh, fashion to, uh, to home or to services beyond uh, the hospital. So this, this issue of transparency really can't stress how much value that uh, creates. 
So for example, the nursing staff and doctors in the cardiology ward can see when a chest pain patient first hits the emergency department. They can see the severity of that cardiology patient in the emergency department and they can be then making active plans to pull that patient out of the ED into the appropriate um, ward, the cardiology ward uh, in that instance. But because we're hooked into all other data sources, uh, we can also supplement the clinical data for the cardiology ward with data about that same patient that may have been collected in, in the outpatients. And on to my clinic. So my clinic operates in the outpatient service uh, space. So outpatients in public hospitals uh, are used to uh, provide uh, medical surgical consultations for public patients. Um, they also can be called back uh, for you know, minor procedures. It might be wound review, uh, uh, for example. Um, and general progress reporting. But again, uh, pretty much universally across outpatient services in Australia, outpatients are a headache. In terms of issues with patient services, uh, patients, um, you know, getting to a clinic, the clinic's not ready for them, you know, they wait around for hours and then they leave before they, you know, receive their service. Um, there's the problem that patients often just recycle through outpatients. So the, because of a lack of decision support technology to uh, the medical staff, in particular junior medical staff, the decision doesn't get made to say, right, we, we now provided the appropriate care for this patient. We no longer need to recycle them back through the outpatient service. So in this space, we are again uh, providing decision support uh, to, to the doctors treating ambulatory um, uh, patients. Across our public hospital system, there's something like 26 million occasions of service annually. But when you compare Australia with other uh, countries, we are providing way more uh, services than are considered to be clinically um, efficient and that is the sort of opportunity that our Maya uh, Clinic uh, product uh, will help our future customers uh, redress. Great, thank you Ray. Uh, we are now opening up a discussion of questions. So we've had a few questions come through during the presentation. Um, I'll point this one at Ray. Could you please provide an indication of a typical contract size? You mentioned the Northern Territory project in the press release, which is a relatively small hospital. So can you provide some guidance to the size of this project? Uh, yes, thank you, Ash. Um, it, it depends on what combination of our uh, product sets uh, they put on top of the Maya platform. The My platform is the foundation. You know, typically that's about a three hundred thousand dollar spend. Uh, to try and be a bit more uh, specific, uh, in the recent purchase order that we received from Northern Territory Health for our best practice emergency department pathology ordering, you know, module uh, that's going into Royal Darwin and Alice Springs hospitals, the contract value on that was was around the one point. Five million dollar mark. Um, I guess a more recent example is um, in the New Zealand uh, context. We were recently awarded preferred vendor status uh, for a single uh, hospital installation on Maya Flow. So the, the Flow products that you saw there, including the bed management uh, software, uh, the value of that uh, contract uh, is uh, just over 1.5. A million dollars, um, but if if a hospital, for example, uh, wants to focus on, say, you know, just the Maya uh, clinic uh, product, um, of course, that requires the Maya uh, platform as well. 
that might be a half a million to three quarters of a million dollars value. Excellent, thank you, Ray. We have another question that's come through. I saw in your presentation that 96% sorry, 96 of hospitals are yet to achieve a fully digital environment. Why is this the case? It seems, it seems unfathomable that in this day and age, hospitals are not fully automated. Well, I agree, it does seem unfathomable, um, but it's a sad uh, you know, reality that there are still many processes in our public hospitals that run on pen and paper processes. And about the only thing you can say about that is that the pen and paper processes are reasonably well understood. So one of the issues in introducing information technology is um, how do you make the change management task um, of reasonable proportions. So again, it is a sad reality that with the majority of health IT installations in the past, the cost of the change management, you know, to install you know, the software, to then readjust workflows, you know, to the software, retrain the staff, the cost of that implementation effort, change management effort has been many times the cost of the software. And that's part of the reason why uh, when we set out as the co-founder, as the co-founders of our sit-in, uh, Malcolm and I said we have to focus on a human interface that is intuitive, that is highly visual, uh, that the smart people that we have in our hospitals can look at and see instantly where the value for their job, where the value for their work lies. So we have prided ourselves on the quality of that interface. Um, it's been, uh, I guess, uh, where a substantial amount of our R&D investment has gone, but it pays off handsomely uh, when it comes time for a customer to uh, install our technology. And, and I remember very clearly uh, when we assisted NT Health implement my ED in the emergency department of the Royal Adelaide Hospital. Uh, the training session started with uh, Malcolm taking in a box of uh, donuts. Uh, by the time he'd handed out the donuts, um, a number of uh, staff, you know, they're, they're obviously very smart people, were already tapping away on the technology and the training session, you know, was over within 20 minutes. Uh, so, so that is a huge barrier to health IT uptake that, that we have solved with our technology. Um, but of course, um, there does need to be significant expenditure in the departmental systems that we sit across. Um, and, and so there's also the, the, the investment barrier, I guess, that's part of the explanation behind that 96%. Great, thank you, Ray. Um, another question we had come through was, do you capitalise or expense your R&D expenses? Uh, thank you, Ash. We have uh, traditionally expensed our R&D. Um, that's been our, our history through the company and was the case um, again in, uh, in financial year uh, 15. Um, where we enjoyed revenues of, of, over, fee, of over $5 million um, with a small loss of $180,000. I guess if we hadn't expensed R&D uh, and we'd capitalised it, uh, that might look uh, more attractive, uh, but I guess it's been a, a, a core value of the company to recognise the importance of R&D and to uh, expense it along the line. Great. And Finally, we have one last question from Claude Walker. Why does a hospital want to buy your products? Specifically, why do the decision makers choose Maya in particular? Is it better or is it cheaper? Can you explain further, Ray? Yes. Well, I, I think uh, if you uh, just reflect back on that Maya Flow uh, product, um, we've managed to uh, strike a, a very clever product solution in the sense that we're providing a very powerful tool 
to the healthcare professionals that do the real job of, hos of hospital care. So we're giving the clinicians uh, a tool that helps them make the best possible clinical decisions in the shortest possible time and then be able to visualise how their patient is flowing through the process of care that they've chosen. But a, a traditional problem has been that despite the importance of the clinicians and the care teams, they don't hold the purse. So the investment decisions get made um, higher up uh, the organisation um, in the C-suite, you know, where you know the focus is uh, equally on, you know, bu budget pressures, you know, KPIs, you know, performance ratings, etc. And now with this MyFlow product, we're able to give very hard, tangible evidence to the executive management of the hospital as to how this technology is actually allowing them to process uh, their, the, their patients with lower uh, length of stay, uh, with less you know, uh, you know, clinical complications, all of which is a big uh, plus to their uh, budget bottom line. So in this particular uh, product, the MyFlow product, uh, one of our most recent, we've now got a convergence between the interests uh, of the clinical care teams and the interests of the executive management, you know, the budget, uh, the budget holders. Um, in terms of where do we uh, sit in terms of price point, um, I can't answer that question uh, with any surety. I, I'm not really across um, competitive pricing, and of course. The pricing doesn't mean anything unless you're clear about the exact you know, functions that they're providing. Um, I guess though, I think we must be about the mark because with a product that came out of um, a proof of concept lab project back in July, was immediately um, implemented in, in three public hospitals. Uh, we follow that with an immediate order for, for another two public uh, hospitals and we've just scored our New Zealand um, preferred vendor status, and in the public sector, um, uh, believe me, that's very rapid decision making. Great, thank you, Ray. That is all we have time for today, everyone. So I apologise for going a little bit over time. Um, if you do have any other questions, feel free to email them through to me. My email address is ashley.wilby at alcidian.com. Thank you everyone and thank you for your time. Goodbye.